get the thing out in a sort of an ugly way. So now I'm just going to put it over here on this cardboard thing for the time being. All right, well, one thing that I had broken was this little guy right here. For whatever reason, I had pulled, popped this thing off, and then the deck lid just wouldn't close, but I was able to locate this piece and put it back on. The other thing that I did is I knocked off this one, which is, uh, it goes to the plus side of the coil, and it came, went on this wire. So I'm just gonna go ahead and reconnect that. All right, so starting to look at the problems here. The first thing I see here is, let's see, it's pretty clear that I had a main seal leak because I have oil all over in here, uh, inside of my, uh, so this looks good, but the, the ton of oil on the inside of my bell housing for the transmission, but only down below, and I think that this throw-out bearing is still good. Everything here looks good. Just clearly there's a, a leak. Let's take a look. <sighs> the main seal. Well, you can't see it, but... Oh, here it is. So, I have two heater tube cables. We'll see if they actually reach. See, I have this one, whoops. I have this one over here. Barely coming out. I have this one over here, which I actually had to cut before. So. this whole slew of wires here so because I have an alternator now I'm gonna have to get rid of this uh, voltage regulator here and then I just connect up two wires to each other but I need to look up exactly how to do that um, other than that I may clean up the inside of this just a little bit with a scrub brush and uh, go from there. All right, getting to work on this. So I have the the bypass for the uh, um, regulator. So I took this guy out from the bus and I fashioned my own little two pole system here um, that bolts on there and this two poles. So I thought about having them be exposed and I realized that, like, this thing definitely has everything being exposed. Um, although I suppose there is this hollowed out back in case something were to flow down here. But look, if you look on the inside there, I mean... Anyway, I did, I did it like this, and um, I guess water could come in. You're filling up gas there. You know, if it flowed down here... Um, but you know, that's where the open poles were for the, uh, voltage regulator anyway. So what I have here, this guy here is the relay that keeps my electric fuel pump from, uh, continuing if the alternator, I think it's D, is it D, uh, F or D plus or whatever, one of them is the switch. So if it stops turning... This, it'll stop the fuel pump and uh, so I had to do the wiring of the RL44 and they all come out here I'm probably gonna probably tape this up into a big clump and then I use a zip tie to hold this plug up into the RL44 and then I have the two poles here where I, I connected the two red wires and I connected the blue with the green the way you're supposed to do it when you bypass and then 
you know, the rest of my wires here is the spaghetti coming out here. Um, so I'm going to kind of organize that and maybe zip tie it up a little bit to clean it up. All right. Well, did I over zip tie it? Hell yes, I did. So you can see, I don't have it. This is a home jobby wiring harness because I had to run a bunch of wires when I re redid this bus. Um, and I didn't put in a new wiring harness. So I have all these wires, probably not the right color or anything. But anyway, the wires come in here and then a couple of them go to ground here. And then I have them going up here. They go to my new two pole system, which is because I'm bypassing the, uh, regu the uh, voltage regulator. Then I have a bunch of connections that come up here and they go to the uh, RL44. That's for my electric uh, fuel pump so that it doesn't keep pumping if I flip the bus. And then this is the fuse that goes to the, um, you know, connects to, to, the, to the electric fuel pump. And then I have all these connections. So I'm gonna have to secure that a little bit. Then it comes down here. And then I have all my wires here that are gonna connect to the various things on the coil. Um, and I have those mostly labeled. So I should be able to figure that out. And then down here I have my connection for the uh, fuel temperature. So I think I'm pretty much set here. Um, as far as what I wanted to get done under, you know, on the wiring before I put this motor in. So, and I might just clean this up a little bit inside the, uh, I have a little bit of gunk inside uh, the um, bell housing. Overall, this looks pretty good. I have a new throw out bearing, but I just don't think, uh, I don't think I need it. It's really smooth and it's actually pretty new. So, yeah, just gonna clean this out a little bit. All right, so I'm uh, preparing the um, this uh, thing for the um, where the fuel outlet's gonna go. So basically, this guy is gonna go outside here. So. Uh, it's going to go like this, and then it's going to connect under the bus um, to where, let's see, I need a light. Where, oh, here it is. <clears throat> Sorry for the camera movement, but it's going to connect under here to where that fuel pump is. So I'm going to have to take out that one because that converts from the... I guess it's like a seven millimeter hose to a five millimeter hose. Um, but I, I just am going to run this hose from here. And then it's going to connect to this guy. Which will then connect into the bus. So I'm clearly going to need like about this much hose like this here but it's hard to know exactly uh, without the bus being in there so I'm gonna leave it long for now but the way I, I'm gonna drive the hose onto the fitting because the fitting is a 5 16 and I have a feeling that it really needed to be a quarter but all I could find in the 6 a.m. was the 5 16 fitting here so it needs like a little bit of like lubrication to really get into here so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to dip the dip this uh into i got rubber gloves on here i'm just gonna i could use soapy water or something else but i don't like to get the scum in there so i'm just going to dip this into the gas tank it's going to get some gas hopefully that is slippery enough I'm gonna to try to drive this thing far enough on so that I can get a hose clamp on there. All 
All right. That's when you use a 5 16 5 16 barb from the 6AN fitting and you go into a uh, one quarter inch fuel line so you can see the little nub there but um, I think that's fine it's not the barb's not that much too big and then uh, I can just get one of my hose clamps okay so I've got this thing straight again it's gonna come off the bus like this go up over the heater box I tightened all this down and then this is going to curve around and probably it'll only need about five, four or five inches of hose to connect to that fuel pump. Here I got the quarter inch onto the 5 16 barb and I just need to get this guy over top of that clamp and uh, screwed down. There's no way this is coming off. It's either anything bad happens. It's just gonna wear through the hose, but this is definitely not coming off of that 5 16 barb So I don't want to go too tight on that because I can see it already depress into the um, Into the rubber so that is set there So I got to take off the existing um, the existing hose here which then connects here to this so I, sh I, I have the screwdriver in here but I don't have to worry about fuel leaking out because I have a solenoid the solenoid is preventing any fuel from coming out I need a shorty regular screwdriver here and then I'm going to take this, see if you can see that, I'm going to take this segment of hose out here and I'm going to connect it to that one that I just did that is all uh, quarter inch hose, quarter inch rubber hose. And if you look over here, let's see if you can see that, it basically uses that hose coming from the solenoid, which is this guy right here is the solenoid the solenoid has been great because the gravity fed fuel is no longer pushing on your carb uh on your on your carb valves just when you're parked once you get the solenoid in place so all right i'm gonna take this off now All right, fabulous, and just like that, I have my uh, fuel line off of the pump. And uh, what's gonna happen is this guy here is going to connect like this. So, I don't know if it's possible to see, but basically, this 6 a.m. fitting fit here 6 a.m. fitting will fit here and then it'll curve around I'll cut the excess off of this hose and then I'm gonna attach it to the fuel pump which kind of points diagonal so that's why I need the hose to bend it around 